best small mixer and monitors for video editing, Mackie Pro FX6 V3 mixer, and PreSonus Eris BT 3.5 monitors. I'm a video editor that is also into recording music. When I'm working from home, I need a dependable small audio mixer and active reference monitors. After a lot of research and testing, I found a combination that works great for me, that's also budget friendly. In this video, I will do an overview and review of the Mackie Pro FX6 V3 6 channel audio mixer and a pair of PreSonus Eris BT 3.5 active Bluetooth media reference monitors. I'll cover unboxing, setup, and do a sound test, overview, and review of this awesome combination. I'll leave links in the description below this video if you want to check anything out. Let's get started. Unboxing and Overview The Mackie Pro FX6 V3 6 channel mixer comes with the mixer of course, which has two mic line inputs with phantom power that have gain controls and high and low EQ knobs. They also have high Z and low cut filter buttons, good for connecting musical instruments. You also get four other line inputs, two quarter inch and a 3.5 millimeter stereo connection. All inputs have level faders of course. The mixer also has 24 built-in FX presets, featuring reverb, chorus, delay, distortion, and flange. The main meters feature two eight-segment LEDs. For outputs, we have two main XLR outs, two quarter-inch outs, and a headphone out, with level faders for each. The mixer features a two in, four out, up to 24-bit, 192 kHz USB connection. The blend fader allows you to monitor your computer's output and a direct feed from the mixer. It weighs only 2.6 pounds and is small. You also get a power supply, a USB cable, a quick start guide, and cards to download free software. The PreSonus Eris BT 3.5 Active Bluetooth Media Reference Monitors come with two monitors, of course, that have an 80 Hz to 20 kHz frequency response. They don't require a separate amplifier, they are self-powered, 50 watts total. They sell a version without Bluetooth and another version with Bluetooth that's just a little more money. Both versions are almost identical. The front of the left monitor features a power switch, a volume knob, an aux in, and a headphones connection. Both speakers have a 3.5 inch woofer that delivers tight bass and clean sound, and a 1 inch silk dome tweeter, reproducing nice highs. I like that it has a protector over it. People with kids will appreciate this little touch. The left speaker has several inputs and a few controls, including two balanced quarter-inch TRS inputs, two unbalanced RCA line-level inputs. There are two acoustic tuning controls for high and low frequency adjustments. Personally, I just leave them in the middle, but that's up to you. The Bluetooth version also includes a Bluetooth pairing button to connect wirelessly to Bluetooth devices. I'll show you how to pair a little later. You also get a power cable, a 3.5 mm TRS to RCA cable, a 3.5 TRS stereo cable, a speaker cable, eight foam stickers, just place them on the bottom of the speakers, and a quick start guide and papers to download free software. Setup. Now I'm gonna show you how I set up my mixer and monitors with my editing system. Your configuration may be a little different, but this will give you an idea of how to hook everything up. First, I'll connect the power supply to the back of the mixer and plug the other end into a power outlet. Then I'll plug in the USB cable. I'll connect the other end of the USB cable to the computer. 
With my edit suite, I'm using Adobe Premiere Pro on an iMac computer. Because I like to monitor my video on a SDI calibrated monitor, I'm using a Blackmagic Design Ultra Studio 4K Mini Thunderbolt 3 Capture and Playback Unit. If you don't have one, I'll tell you what you can do a little later, but for now, please follow along with me. I'm going to plug in two quarter inch cables into the analog audio outs on the back of the Blackmagic unit, channels one and two, which allow me to monitor a stereo output left and right. I'll plug an XLR cable connected to a microphone into channel one for recording voiceovers. I'll insert two quarter inch cables from the Blackmagic unit into line three and four of the mixer. Now I can use the three four level fader to adjust the volume coming from Premiere Pro. I can also plug in some headphones if I want to as well. Now let's set up the audio monitors. First I'll plug the power cable into the back of the left speaker. Then I'll plug the other end into a power outlet. Next I'll connect the speaker cable to the back of the left speaker. There's a red connection and a black connection. Just press in the tabs and insert each side of the cable. I'll connect the other end of the speaker cable to the right monitor. It's the same procedure I just showed you. Next, I'm going to plug in two quarter inch cables into the main outs on the mixer. Then I'll take the other ends of these cables and plug them into the speakers. Then power on the mixer. Make sure that the Premiere Pro audio hardware is set up to use the Blackmagic unit. We'll do a different configuration shortly. Then I'll turn on the monitor and adjust the volume to a comfortable level. Also adjust the main level fader of the mixer if needed. Make sure it's not muted. Sound test. You can't really judge how speakers sound using a camera microphone. You really need to use your ears and be in the actual room. But for those of you that want to hear a simple sound test, here's a quick recording of music playing from this mixer and monitors. It sounds good to me. Pairing the BT speakers to a device. As I mentioned, these speakers have a BT version. Pairing the monitors to a Bluetooth device is easy. First, turn on the monitors. Then go into your settings app and make sure that Bluetooth is turned on. Press and hold the Bluetooth pair button on the back of the left monitor for a few seconds. The monitors should then appear on the list of other devices. Tap that device and you're all set. Now you can open your music app and play music from your device to your monitors. I'm using an iPhone. Now as promised, here's how to use the mixer without a Blackmagic unit. In Adobe Premiere Pro, I'll simply click on Premiere Pro on the top left of my computer screen, then go to Preferences, then go to Audio Hardware. I'll change my default audio output from Blackmagic Ultra Studio 4K Mini to Pro FX, the mixer. Then under Output Settings, I'll drag the left and right speaker icons down to Analog 3 and 4. Now, on my mixer, I'll push down the USB 3.4 button to the On position. Then I can hear my Adobe Premiere Pro audio coming through the USB cable right to the Pro FX6 mixer. I can now adjust the loudness of it using the 5 6 level fader. Pretty handy. To record a voiceover using the microphone plugged into the mixer, I'll do the following. I'll click on Premiere Pro on the top left of my computer screen, then go to Preferences, then go to Audio Hardware. I'll change my default audio input from Blackmagic Ultra Studio 4K Mini to Pro FX. Then I'll put on some headphones and turn off my monitors to prevent feedback. 
I'll set my levels, of course, on the mixer, then click the microphone icon on my Premiere Pro timeline and start speaking. I'll press the spacebar to stop recording, and just like that, I have a voiceover on my timeline. Review Both the Mackie Pro FX6 V3 6 channel audio mixer and the pair of PreSonus Aris BT 3.5 active Bluetooth media reference monitors have a lot to offer. They are dependable, well built, produce high quality sound, and best of all, are small and affordable. Great for home studios and edit suites. I highly recommend this combination. Well, I hope that you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.